In this Autolab video, we'll be looking at setting up the Autolab environment on top of the Revelo cloud platform. The first thing you're going to need to do is register for an account with Revelo, and I won't be covering that in this video. I'm going to assume you already have an account, and so we're just going to log into that account in the Revelo portal. Once you're logged in, you need to have a look in your library. The first thing to look for is that you have the blueprint for the Autolab 2.6 final. If you don't have this blueprint, you'll need to log a support call with Revelo in order to get that blueprint. Also get them to increase the maximum RAM on your virtual machines, because the virtual center virtual machine will require 8 gigabytes of RAM, which is more than the 7 that is the default maximum if you're on the trial. Once you have the Autolab blueprint, you're going to need to upload the ISOs for Windows Server 2008 R2, vCenter installer, and the ESXi installer. And you need to go into your disk images part of your library, and you'll find that those ISOs aren't there initially, so you need to use the import disk image option. This will try and connect to the import tool, which is a service that runs on your machine. You're going to need to download the correct installer for it and run that installer. When the installer runs, it'll install a service on your machine if it's Windows, or a command line tool if it's a Mac, and that service runs all the time on your Windows machine. You may want to disable that service or set it to manual start, but we need that service in order to do the uploads. Once the service is installed, you can log into the import tool using the same credentials that you use to log into your Revelo account. And from here, you can click the green Upload button and choose to upload just some ISOs. We don't need to upload whole virtual machines, although, of course, you may want to do that later. For Autolab, I need you to upload the ISOs for vCenter installer, as well as for ESXi and Windows Server. You can parallelize the upload, so you can upload multiple ISOs at once, and you'll need to select one at a time. Unfortunately, you can't multi-select in this upload window. You have to go through and select each one one at a time. Now, because we're uploading somewhere around 8 gigabytes of data, it's going to take a while. In my lab environment, this can take anything up to three hours to upload. It's very dependent on the reliability of your internet connection. So I've usually uploaded this from my lab, which sits at an ISP. It's in a colo there. It will take some time. You just leave it alone, let it upload, and as long as your internet connection is nice and stable, it'll all upload. If you do have an, a less than reliable internet connection, you may want to just upload one file at a time so you get them completing as quick as possible. And you can see in the disk images view that the files are uploading. Eventually the uploads complete. All of the ISO uploads will reach 100%. And in the disk image library, you can see all of the ISOs have turned up and they have a nice blue tick next to them, meaning they're ready to use. Next phase to do is to create an application from the Blueprint. So the Blueprint is like what you'd normally download for Autolab. It's just a, an outline of all of the virtual machines. Creating an application will actually deploy those virtual machines up somewhere. Give the application a name and a useful description. You may find you end up with lots of different applications based on the same thing, so descriptions are really useful for this. At this stage, we just have a definition of the virtual machines. They haven't yet been deployed into a cloud, but we need to make some changes. We need, in particular, to add those ISOs to virtual machines. Now, because the build share on the NAS VM is unavailable from the internet, I couldn't deploy that securely and make it available over the internet, you need to attach the ESXi and vCenter installers to the NAS virtual machine. Right, so just those two ISOs. It doesn't particularly matter which CD drive you connect them to, but make sure you do connect them. Once you've chosen the ISOs, you need to click the Save button and wait until the data is saved before you make any other changes. Really important that you see that data is saved message before you start making other changes. Otherwise, one set of changes can override another. The other changes are standard. Autolab thing of attaching the Windows Server 2008 R2 ISOs to both the vCenter virtual machine and the domain controller. And again, you need to click that Save button to apply the changes that you're making. Once we've updated all of the virtual machines, we can hit the Publish button. This is the act of copying the virtual machines up into the cloud that we want. Before we do hit Publish, it's worth checking that the correct ISOs are connected everywhere and that all of your saves have been correct. I always choose the best performance option for the cloud and always choose to use AWS for that rather than Google Compute. 
Also, because we're doing the build, it's going to take a little while to get through the process of building. And so I set my application auto stop to be six hours. It should only take four hours to build the auto lab, but sometimes you have to mess around with it a little bit and it may take a little longer. Um, usually four hours gives me two more hours of, of runtime afterwards. Definitely keep using this auto stop option because you keep paying for these virtual machines while they're running. And if you get called away from the middle of doing some work and you don't come back for six hours, it's easy to rack up a bill. Even if you don't come back for two days, if the VMs are still running, you're still paying. So I really like this auto stop option. The next configuration we need to do is to tell Ravello not to power on all of these virtual machines at once the moment that we deploy. As always with Autolab, we need to build things in a correct sequence, and we need to do that with a fair amount of control. I also like to check on the pricing. As you can see, this is just under $3 an hour if I run the entire lab. You can see that now that uh, Publish is completed, I'm going to power on the first two virtual machines, which are the NAS and DC virtual machines. These two you can power on in parallel, and they will build in parallel. You'll see there's a bit of a delay between switching the VMs on and actually having them powered up. You can see the hourglass on these machines for a while. Now I've taken a, a quite a bit of time out of it, and the, the greens are up. The hourglass shows up for quite a while because the actual outer hypervisor, the Ravello HVX hypervisor, has to be deployed into the cloud you've chosen before the VMs can be powered up. So it can take a little while when you first power on these virtual machines before they start up. Then eventually the green on the virtual machines shows you that the virtual machines are running, and we can take a look at the consoles of those virtual machines. The NAS virtual machine in Ravello is an Ubuntu Linux virtual machine. And when it first powers up, it copies the contents of those two ISOs into the build chair. And so its console is just this black screen with a flashing cursor. And it will take quite a while to copy the contents of the ISOs. It's not a problem. That doesn't hurt us. But if you immediately connect to your NAS virtual machine and you see a login prompt, an Ubuntu login prompt, in the first few minutes after the VM was powered on, then something's gone wrong. The ISOs aren't in the wrong place, and the build chair is not going to be correctly populated. I do check that the ISOs are correct, connected in the right place, and then you just need to reboot the NAS virtual machine for it to see that. It checks for the ISOs every time it starts up. The domain controller virtual machine, of course, is a Windows virtual machine going through its normal Windows build process. At this point, you can walk away for an hour. Okay, the NAS virtual machine will take an hour to build, and you just ignore it, just the same as you normally do with Autolab. An hour after the virtual machine was powered up, you will have the normal virtual machine console. And this is uh, accessible to you through the Revello portal. But personally, I prefer to use an RDP connection. And so both the virtual center and domain controller virtual machines are available through RDP. The domain controller, you need to get the DNS name and connect to that through RDP, but you also need the port because it's not on the standard port, and it's normally on port 10,000. Connect to the domain controller on port 10,000 using RDP, log in as the administrator account, and at this stage, the password is the VMware, capital VM, uh, one exclamation mark password, which is the default password. Because we haven't had access to the build share to push in our automate.ini file, we haven't actually had uh, the password change from the default. I think it's important in this cloud environment that you do change from the default. And so the validate script will check for this and ask you to set a new admin password if it finds that you haven't overridden the default password. When you set this, it will write it into the automate.ini file and then update all of the accounts that have already been set up using the default password. We also have a prompt in here to ask whether we want to automatically run the auto add host script, and usually you will. And finally, because we haven't put the PowerCLI file onto the build chair, there's an option to connect to the website to download PowerCLI. Unfortunately, there is no unauthenticated website to download PowerCLI from, so you will have to provide your My VMware login in order to be able to download the PowerCLI installer. And the build of the vCenter won't complete correctly without PowerCLI installer, so you must have this guy. 
just scroll down on this download screen and that blue box on the right that actually says download on it, but I can't be bothered maximizing this on screen because I just want this to download PowerCLI Installer. It takes a couple of moments to download and eventually, about a minute, uh, the, ISO, the uh, PowerCLI Installer is downloaded and now the validate script will complete without errors. It will always prompt you about automatically running auto add hosts, but so long as the validation completes correctly, everything's good at this stage. So now we have a built domain controller virtual machine. We can power on the remaining four virtual machines. Powering on all four virtual machines together minimizes the distribution of these VMs. The HVX of Ravello's platform will actually power up these four virtual machines all on the same HVX hypervisor. Um, so definitely a good idea to power them on all together at once. Again, takes a little while because that hypervisor has to be deployed. We have the blue and the hourglass. But after a little while, the virtual machines will all power on. Usually first the ESX servers and then later the vCenter. This is good because we do want to control the install of ESXi on these ESX servers. Normally by the time the console is available, the Pixie boot menu has timed out, so you just have to hit enter to reset that and it'll come back through the Pixie boot menu. That takes a little while, so I normally do the same process on all three of the virtual machines. Just hit enter and then open the console on the next virtual machine. So all three ESX servers, we're gonna uh, get into this rebooting state. And by the time the third one's rebooting, you can return to the first one and it's at the menus. So you then go through the menus on each of the hosts and say, this is the ESXi server I want you to build. Host one on host one, and <laughs> funnily enough, host two is on host two. Right, easy to pick them up from the menu. And finally, host three. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, these ESXi boot from the network builds take a little while. And so again, you're going to walk away from this for 10 minutes. The ESXi boots sometimes fail. As you can see here, this one is a fail with a broken pipe message. Host 3 has failed. We're going to need to power off and power back on host 3 and, and do a rebuild. In my experience, that broken pipe happens probably every fifth or sixth build of an ESXi server, and sometimes you'll see a purple screen. These are things that Ravello are working on to improve their platform. The resolution for us is fairly simple. We uh, check that it's the only affected virtual machine, and then we power it off. So hit the stop button. And once it's stopped, you simply power it back on again. Once it comes to the green running screen, you can open up the console. And again, it'll go through the same Pixie menu, and you can choose which ESXi server you want to build. Usually by the time the broken one is ready to reinstall again, the other ones are successful and they come to the usual ESXi server uh, built screen. And we can just close the consoles. Once we have a successful build on the ESXi servers, we don't need the consoles again. Here's our ESXi server that was broken in the install and is now fixed. It's installing happily now. We do still want to keep a watch on that. It is I guess possible that it could have a second failure. I've not experienced that, but it is theoretically possible. While that machine is building, let's take a quick look at the vCenter and see how its build is progressing. Windows installing. You will now have to wait for these machines to install. You have roughly 90 minutes to wait from powering on the group of four virtual machines until the vCenter server is built. And so we had an hour's wait for the domain controller to build, hour and a half for vCenter. During that hour and a half, our second ESXi server, our second build of our ESXi server will have completed. Once the vCenter server build is complete, we can use the console again, but again, because we've published it through RDP, I much prefer to use RDP to connect to the console of my vCenter. For vCenter, we just need to connect to the console on the standard RDP port. There's no need to use a different port. And you need to log in as the local administrator account on the vCenter and use the password that you set when we ran that validate script. In my case, you saw password uh, with a capital P and a zero, and it was the password I'd set.
Once we're connected to the vCenter server through RDP, we use the Autolab uh, script menu to run the validate script and everything looks nice and clean and happy. Now, this is absolutely a standard Autolab build at this point. We have those three ESXi servers, we have NFS and iSCSI shared data stores. All of the things that you get when you build Autolab on your own equipment, you get when you build Autolab on top of Revelo. So it's all there. The one thing that is slightly different is that I haven't yet got the disk configuration for running vSAN. So we can't run with the Autolab 2.6 build, we can't run vSAN on top of Autolab on top of Ravella. You need to use the NAS virtual machine for all of your storage. But here we have it, three ESXi servers, standard configuration, lots of data stores. And being Autolab 2.6, I've increased the size of the data stores. So there's enough space to store some additional virtual machines. Of course, at some point we're finished for the day, and this is a really important thing, far more important on Ravella than it is on your home platform. You need to shut down your Autolab when you're finished with it. Uh, so it is an option off the Autolab script menu. You do need to confirm that you want to shut down the lab, and then away it goes, shutting down virtual machines, shutting down ESX servers. This is a good, clean way of shutting down the lab. You can simply use the stop option on the vApp, on the application in Ravella, or let the auto shutdown timeout, the, the drop dead timeout on the application expire and uh, the whole lot will be shut down automatically for you. Because the Autolab platform provides the router as part of the platform, there is actually a timeout on this uh, shutting down the router option. I need to tune the script a little bit. There's a couple of things I want to tune about the shutdown script so it's much more pleasant to use, particularly on the Ravello platform where you're going to use it every time you use the lab. Uh, first time on a newly built lab, you will be asked to update the cached certificate for the, the NAS virtual machine. Absolutely routine. After the first time you've built it, you won't need to do that again unless you rebuild your lab. And then as well as the ESX ser service shutting down, now the domain controller and finally the virtual center virtual machine shut themselves down. You can see that the elapsed time on this build has been just on three and a half hours. There's still two hours, 22 minutes of my six hours to run. So the actual build time is three and a half hours, including a little bit of messing around to get this recorded. Autolab on Ravello, nice, easy platform to work with. And I think it's a, a great option if you don't have the hardware to run Autolab on your own equipment.